is alive. Welcome to Home Time with Pastor Tom Snyder. At this moment, we would like to thank Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church for being our gracious sponsor. And now, here's Pastor Tom with some announcements. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tom. I'm pastor of Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church here in uh, Hedgesville, West Virginia. Uh, we've had the blessing of preaching and traveling all over the world. We got radio programs, uh, Facebook Live, a YouTube channel, and you've tuned in to one of our archive recordings of our radio program. I hope you enjoy it, but more than that, I hope you are ministered to by it. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, we'll come back with you with a few messages at the end of the program. Amen. I want you to listen to this song that's going to go along with my message. I'm going to be talking about stone throwers and how to handle stone throwers. And old Michael W. Smith, he does a pretty good job. He, he, he's already got the answer. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my battles. What we're doing tonight. This is how I find my battles. Just when you think you're lost. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find Ladies and gentlemen, what a powerful, powerful song. Amen. I have found in my years of serving the Lord, and I have been in many, many fights. I have been in many, many battles. Amen. Just recently been in another one. <laughs> Amen. But I have found the best way is for me to lay my weapons down. Amen. Let him fight. When God fights for me, you know, every great victory in the Bible is when God fights for us. Amen. God is in control. Oh, there will be times that we pick up our shield. There will be times we pick up our sword and our sling. Amen. But I'm here to tell you the greatest, the 
greatest victories always come when God is in control of the fight. In the middle of your Bible in 2 Samuel, there is a story about King David. No, this is not the story uh, of David and the shepherd. It is not the story of David defeating Goliath or killing the bear and the lion. It is not the story of David's failure with Bathsheba. But there is a story here that doesn't get told many times, but there is a lesson to be learned, and it's found in chapter number 16. I'll start reading with verse number five. Then came D- David to Belhurim, and became and beca- behold, there came a man out of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. And he came forth, and he cursed as he came. And he cast stones at David, and all the servants of the king of David, and all the people, and all the mighty men was on the right hand and on his left. And and Sid Simei, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, thou art a man of Bilal. And the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, whose stead has reigned in the Lord, and delivered the kingdom into the hands of Absalom, thy son. Thou art a mischief and because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abshai, the son of Zuru, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord and king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zuru? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, curse David, who shall who shall then say, wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abshiah and to all his servants, behold, my son, which came forth out of my bowels, seeketh my life, how much more than this Benjamite do it. Let him alone, let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, it may be that the Lord will look on my afflictions and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And David and his men went by the way, and Shimei went along the hillside over against him and cursed and went and threw stones out against him and threw dust. I want to speak to you folks for just a few moments. And I know this is uh, this is kind of strange for a radio message, but I know that we've got a lot of Christian people that listen to me every week. And uh, we want to talk to you uh, about how to handle a stone thrower. How, what, how do you handle people that throw stones at you? How to handle stones a stone thrower. Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. Give us the divine anointing. Help us to do what you would want us to do in this message. I cannot do it in myself. In Jesus' name. First of all, I want to talk to you about Shimei for just a second. Do you know that there were over 18 different Shimei's in the Bible? So we got to make sure that we're talking about the right one. This one here, he is only mentioned here well, I shouldn't say he's only, he's only mentioned concerning this story. He's mentioned in a couple of different places. But during this part of David's life, this Shimei, it says he was of the house of Saul, that he was a Benjamite. Okay, now listen. He, wasn't no, he didn't have no authority in the house of Saul. He was, and let me put it to you this way, because all Saul's sons had been killed. And the only one, when David went looking for a representative of the house of Saul, he found Mephibosheth, the crippled boy. The only one that was, the, Shimei, he was just a Benjamite. It's possible that he may have had some relations that was directly in the house of Saul, but chances are he was just, he was just part of the clan of Benjamin where Saul came out of. I want you to see this. I want you to see that he has no rights. He has no authority. And this is very, very important. If you're going to be a stone thrower, and we're going to talk about stone throwers, there was more than one stone thrower in the Bible. Amen. You got to have some authority. Okay? Not just anybody's supposed to pick up and throw stones. But what ends up happening is that the anybody, anybody's do it. And they become they become a weapons in the devil's hand. Okay, so we we've established who Shimei is. Let's talk about who David is. Oh, we know David. Let's talk about some of the attributes of King David. He was a shepherd. 
He was a singer. He was a warrior. He was anointed. He was the king, the inspired God picked king. And he was, he had the epitaph of his name. He was one after God's own heart. Amen. And on top of all this, ladies and gentlemen, he was the greatest stone thrower in the history of the Bible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. David was acquainted with stones. David knew how to use stones. He knew how to use them correctly. He knew when to use them. He had the authority to use them. This is not the first time that David had dealt with stones. You remember the most famous action of his life is when he went down to the brook and picked up five smooth stones, and he put one of them, and he put them in a sling, and he threw it. Amen. David's the greatest stone thrower. Don't you kind of find this kind of, uh, uh, what's the word, ironic? Amen. That the greatest stone thrower now is having stones thrown at him. Ooh, won't that preach? Won't that preach? Amen. The greatest stone thrower of all time is being stoned at. Uh huh. Let's move on here a little bit. There's other examples of stone throwers in the Bible. Um, one of the first ones that we think about is when Achan, whenever he went and, and hid the, uh, the the lot that he wasn't supposed to have in his tent, and he brought all the judgment upon Israel, and Achan was brought out front, and he was stoned. Okay, and if you go back through the Old Testament, you will find different examples of stoned uh, people that had gotten uh, rocks thrown at them to the point that they were judged and, and they were killed uh, for their sin. This is, this is not unfamiliar to have rocks thrown at you. I want you to get this. If you're in this life any at all and you're working for the kingdom, chances are sooner or later, you're going to get stones thrown at you. I don't just mean physically, I mean spiritually also. The cursing and the stone throwing, they are one and in, one in the same. But over in the New Testament, there's examples, um, okay, of, of people that were being stoned. They tried to stone Jesus. They tried to stone, uh, well, they did stone Stephen to the point where they killed him. They stoned Paul. But one of the most famous ones is when that woman was caught in adultery, how they picked up the stone. And they threw the stones at this, they wanted to stone this woman. And Jesus comes on the, on the scene and he takes this little stick and he writes on the sand. And after he got done writing, he said, so who have you, who have you got the authority? Who of you has got the right? Who of you can do this? And they all dropped their stones and walked home. I'm talking about how to handle a stone for her. It's this, listen. You all need to get this. I need to get this. This needs to be preached on. This needs to be taught. Amen. This, this principle. Amen. Some people think that they ain't going to happen, but I'm here to tell you, if you're in the ministry at any time at all, amen, if you're walking for Christ any time at all, Jesus said they persecuted him, they'll persecute you. There will be times that you will have to deal with stone throwers. There will be times in your life that you're going to have to deal with it. Now, how do, do, how do you deal with it? Now, there was a servant of David, the son of Abshia. Abshia, the son of Zurah, he says, listen, so David's, David's fleeing. I want you to understand, he's fleeing from his son. He's fleeing his palace. I've thought about this many times. Now, this guy, Shimei, I could have attacked David any time. He could have come to the palace. Amen. He could, have, he could have called David out, but no, he did not do that. Amen. He waited to when David was at a low place. I've said this on the, on the article that I wrote this week. Why is it we wait till a person's down and then we kick them? Amen. We kick them when they're low. We kick them when they're down. That's the way stone throwers are. Most stone throwers, they wait for the opportunity. They don't want to go head to head with somebody. They don't want to, they don't want to do it uh, correctly the way that David, David put the stone in his hand when he's attacking the enemy of the living God and he goes right at him and swings that sling and throws that stone. See, he does it correctly. And I would dare say, 
say that even in the Old Testament, when Achan's sin was being dealt with, it was done correctly. But most people, when they pick up stones, they do not have the authority, nor the courage, nor anything else that would go along. They're not a warrior's heart. They're of a complaining heart. They're a crying heart. They're a bleeding heart. And they wait for the opportunity. I have seen this in church settings. I have seen this in locker rooms. I have seen this in business places. Amen. Nobody would go by themselves, but when something happens, and the leader gets down, um, amen, or whoever they're attacking gets down. They become like uh, hyenas and they begin to circle and, 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 and it takes on a life and everybody wants to pick up a stone then. I want you to understand this. Well, this man, he found some new bold courage, uh, false courage, I should say, and he decides he wants to attack David. Well, there are some good men that haven't left David's side yet. Amen. David has good men that are sticking with him through the hard time. They are sticking with him through uh, the extreme times. Let, let me tell you something. David makes his mistakes. David makes all kinds of mistakes. So he's a man. That's why I love him so much. He makes mistakes, but he just seems to get back up. He is a flawed person. Whoever you're serving under as a leader, amen, or as a workplace, or wherever you're at, they're not perfect men. Men, they're flawed, but they have the authority over you. That's a word that we don't like to deal with much anymore, but they have the authority authority over you. And God has put them over you. You need to be very, very careful about picking up stones. Amen. Do you, do you have the authority? Do you have the rights? Do you know who you're throwing? I, I got to say this. In the church that I grew up in, in some of the great preachers that I was under, um, amen, uh, this, you've heard me talk about the Stricklers and the Powersers and the Brother Travis and, 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 and Brother Fox and uh, just, uh, just different people, Brother Ambrose, just different men of God that I sat under. And in that day, in that time, there ain't no way, amen, that I would be talking about them and throwing stones at them. I, I'm going to tell you, I can't even imagine me sitting down and talking in a, in a, in a rough way or a disrespectful way, amen, to these leaders. But that's how I was taught. When I played on the ball field, amen, there ain't no way in the world that I was talking back to my coach. No. There, it, it just didn't happen. The jobs that I have worked, I just gave somebody advice this week. If, I, if you got a job, it is your job, amen, to do your job and listen to your superior. It is not your job. Listen, if it was your job to question your superior at every angle, then you would be the superior. I know I'm preaching. I'm ringing bells right now. The only thing that makes the military a, a, a force to be reckoned with is a sense of order. Amen. Privates don't go demanding into the general's office and give them a piece of their mind every time they get mad about what's going on in the mess hall. Wow. Wow, I'm talking about how to deal with stone throwers. Listen, in generals... Do not get up in arms and go over and take off the private's head, amen, when privates get out of line. They got other people to deal with that. In this particular case, let's get back to the Bible. In this particular case, uh, David is walking out and this guy is cursing and throwing stones at him. And one of David's men, rightfully so, I think, rightfully so, because if you were talking about my king, if you were talking about my leader, amen, somebody that I have been in the trenches with, don't you think that David deserved, um, amen, the right, to, amen, don't you think he deserved the the respect? Don't you think David had earned it? 
So if I'd been one of those men that had been in the battle with him, when some, uh, I'm just going to say it, some low life person that has never been in the trenches wants to throw stones at him and he doesn't have the authority, I would have react probably like Abshai and want to go over and take his head off. But David rebukes Abshai and says, let him talk, let him throw his stones. God's listening. Oh my, I just heard the radio just go quiet. God is listening. He knows. David says, I, maybe I deserve this. I don't know. Maybe I deserve this. Let him talk. This infuriates Abshai. This infuriates the other people. They keep on walking. And this guy keeps, I notice this guy doesn't go right down and get right in David's face. Says he's up on the hill. He's kind of like far away. He's there just to be a nuisance. That's the way stone throwers are. They don't really want to fight. They just want to complain. They want to throw stones. Listen to me. I've been involved in it. The few times that I have dealt with stone throwers, most of the time, I would say 100% of the time, Brother Tom does not like confrontation. Brother Tom does not like it at all. I want God to take care of the situation. But there has been a few times, amen, and sometimes it hasn't worked out as far as the general thing, but most of the time when I get back and look a stone for her in the eye, a lot of time, amen, they drop their stones and walk away like those did that was at the woman with adultery. Amen, Jesus had that kind of authority. In this situation, David said, let him throw the stones. I love what the scripture says here, that it may be the Lord will look upon my affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursings this day. Let God fight your battles. That We sang the song. Let God take care of it. Amen. Listen, David could have handled this so easily. He, said, Absha, he could have said, Absha, go do your business. Amen. David himself said, here, give me a stone. Give me my sling. I'm still pretty good at this. Uh, let me take that full out right now. But this ain't what he did. Amen. He said, let the Lord fight my battles. Let's see what the Lord's going to do this day. David, had, David, David is not no spring chicken at this point. I mean, David had been through the battles. Like I said, he was the number one stone thrower of all time. Amen. This ain't the first time, amen, that he had been accused of something. This ain't the first time he'd been cursed out. This is not the first time that he's had stones thrown at him. I'm talking to somebody right now. If you're on the battlefield for the Lord, if you're in the fight. I'm going to tell you something. You can't let sticks and stones. You can't let names, people calling you names, rile you up every time. You're not fit for leadership. Amen. If you get a offended every time somebody comes against you. When you preach the word of God, when you stand up for God, there is a whole lot of forces that cannot stand that and they want to bring you down. You need to understand this. We have got this puffy modern day churchology where everybody thinks it's kumbaya all the time. I'm here to tell you we're on the battlefield. We're in a Fight, ladies and gentlemen. There are going to be times that you're going to have stones thrown at you, sometimes from the enemy and sometimes even from your friends. Amen. It's just part of it. It's part of the battle. It's part of the, uh, of the beast that we deal with um, every day. Amen. And if you get offended every time somebody throws stones at you, amen, if you fight back every time someone throws stones at you, your life is going to be difficult. You need to be like David and you need to be like another king, King Jesus. In all this, he opened not his mouth. He was like the sheep. He was like the lamb to the slaughters was dumb. Amen. Let God fight your battle. Amen. Jesus could have called 10,000 angels when they were throwing stones at him on Golgotha. Amen. They were stoning him from the night before. Amen. When they put the boom of the nails in his hands, they were stoning him. 
but yet he'd open not his mouth. How to handle a stone thrower? Let them throw. Let them do their best. Amen. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Someone shout now, amen, over the years, uh, there haven't always been times I've, I've listened to my own preaching, amen, there's been times I've thought back, and every time I've did, especially when I was young in my ministry, I remember one time when a deacon chewed on me, and, and I got back in his face, and we went around, listen, technically I was right, listen, now, what ended up happening to that deacon within five years, he was in eternity, was in a terrible accident. And to this day, it breaks my heart that I got into a shouting match with him. Amen. I want God to fight my battles. I want God to take care of this. Amen. I hope this helps somebody. Amen. Let God fight your battles. Amen. I'm not saying being a doorbat. I'm just saying let God take care of it. Now, remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord. Hey, guys, Pastor Tom coming back at you. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the message that you've just listened to. I hope you were ministered to by it and that you'll be able to use it to minister to somebody else and help us spread the word around the world. If you've enjoyed this, if you've got questions, comments, or a prayer request, you can contact us at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church Facebook page. And uh, if you would like to give a donation that helps us support all our media projects and our mission projects to help us spread the gospel around the world, uh, just see the PayPal link below. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.